Hey everybody, it's Devin Francis, also known as Leonard Meltzner. Hey, hey Devin, guess what? What? Guess what? What? I have, Is it, you have your computer back? I have 2020 vision. Guys, it's the new year. It's been... Guys, it's the roaring 20s. Fill your life with laughter and love. Did you, did you see, um, I guess you probably haven't seen, the midpoint of the new uh, Taz? Don't, don't, sh- sh- don't, don't. No, no, it's it not is a bit Victoria. It's the last episode they was from They just say they November. put more merch in the store. I looked at the the motto, and it looks like something like, uh, I don't know, a wife from the Roaring Twenties would have in her kitchen. It is incredible. Yes, it's like beautiful, fancy font, and then like it's funny, honey guys. Fill your life with laughter and bees. Fill your life with laughter and bees. Funny, <sighs> honey. Well, it's the my favorite part, Victoria, is that my agenda that I use at work in 2018, I wrote Collaborate Teen on the cover. So I didn't write Become the Monster on my one from last year, but I definitely now have to have. write it on on my 2020 agenda. Um, okay, it is episode 178, I believe. Yes. What are we talking about today, Victoria? We are going to talk about the June? July. July. I was close. It was only six months ago. Only six months ago. Only a decade ago. Um, we're going to talk about the July OAC episode of the month, which is for the guest. July 2019, to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> Still last decade. Um, and then we're going to be talking about the album 40 episode, Basset Hounds. Yes. Which we... Have somehow not talked about before what well, I have talked about before because I've talked about every and then episode in depth. Next episode, we'll be talking about the new album. No, not that new album. The old new album. Speaking <laughs> of the new album, when I went and opened the OAC uh-huh. app, I saw the uh, album. I was, I was like. Trying to I didn't even think about it. I was just like, oh yeah, I forgot the new <laughs> album is out. Because <laughs> I've listened to all we're of Album little, 60. We're a little not, behind, Not Album guys. 60. Not Album 60. No, Album I listened 60. To, no, no, 67, right? I listen, yes. I don't know. Um, I listened to all of 67 or whatever number it is, like, half a year ago. Yeah. Um, so I've definitely heard it, and I've heard it for a while now, including the episodes we've been putting out, but I'm not allowed, uh, peeping, because it definitely not We've there are no episodes we've put out. No, I mean, like, the past episodes we've put out, like, about the books and stuff like oh. that, like, the past five. Yes. We recorded those way after I listened to the new album. Yeah. So... I've been in the know. I'm more in the know than Devin is. How does that yes. make you feel? Um, like things usually are. Yeah, that's 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 fair, I guess. Okay. Episode 868, All for the Guest, written by Kathy Buchanan. What happens, Victoria? So in this episode, Penny's parents are going to come down and visit Penny and Wooten for a little bit, hang out with them. And then uh, Bradford springs a visit on them, and then they all gotta, they all gotta collaborate team together, but they have different tastes because uh, Wellington and Wooten grew up in the home of fancyboy.tm. I don't know why I said dot. I was Uh, wondering. (laughs) Fancyboy.tm, that they're so rich they acquired their own trademark for all websites. Um, and then I was going to say something mean, but I won't. Penny grew up in a lower society than they did. I almost said trailer trash. It's not, it's not trailer trash. And that's not a nice thing to say. I felt bad in the end about how angry I was at Frank. But here's the thing. We have a reason that he acted like he did. It's not an excuse that he acted like he did. I totally forgot that he was fired from his job um, when I got to the end of the episode again. All I remember about this episode, I didn't want to re-listen to it, but I figured I should 
because um, this is basically because I listened to these in the summer when I was working in Nelson. Yep. So I listened to them like driving mm-hmm. um, back from Nelson most of the time in the car. So um, it was basically just me screaming at the top of my lungs for 25 minutes on the highway when listening to this. Um, mostly about Wellington. Mostly about his whereabouts. Uh, so that's why I wasn't going to re-listen to it tonight because I basically remembered most of it. But I did not have a very high opinion of it because I was waiting for Wellington to show up the entire time or at least be mentioned last time. So I was like, it's only fair <laughs> if I <laughs> re-listen to it. Uh, I liked it more this time because I wasn't just waiting for Wellington. That's good. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm still not a fan of Frank in general. Was he this bad last time? No, he wasn't. Because like, I wasn't. was like, oh, the I'm last, so... Ex- the last thing he was in, I believe... Was, was the, wedding? the wedding. Yeah. And honestly, I wasn't the biggest fan of Penny's family in their first episode. Word I did the like wise. them in the wedding. Word from the wise. And this, I didn't think, I can't remember their What's the mom's name? Uh, Eleanor, because they're yeah. named after the Roosevelt's. Oh, Frank and okay. Eleanor. Um, I didn't think And the dad, Eleanor his middle name is bad. Ernest, so he's like Frank and Ernest, which is obviously a reference to a series of unfortunate events, book 12, The Penultimate Peril. I was hoping you were saying the importance of being Ernest, but there's no Frank in that play. Um, you and I need to watch The Importance of Being Ernest. I think you would like it. I think everyone would like it. Everyone go watch or read The Importance of Being Ernest. It's amazing. I love it. I love George Oscar Wilde. I don't know who George is. I love Oscar Wilde. <laughs> I love him so much I can't remember what his name is half the time. Um, anyway, I didn't think Eleanor was that bad in this episode, Frank. No, wasn't she wasn't. Great. Here's the thing about my expectations for this episode was like I was like, oh, I'm so excited to get an episode with both Bradford and Penny's parents together. And then Wooten and Penny kind of like tease out what the the conflict is going to be which is like oh they're did you so different did you know that bradford was going to be in the episode before you started listening to it i remembered that someone from wooten's side and someone from penny's side would be there but i didn't remember who specifically who did you think it would be if it wasn't bradford well i was like it's probably not wellington so i mean it's like yeah it's probably bradford but i wasn't really thinking about it that much there was like a past episode i was trying not to remember so that you, i could like experience where you it. were like i know someone from wooten's side of the family i was like yes i screamed a lot and you're like oh it's probably wellington then and i was just like hmm i wish um, <clears throat> so yeah it was like i don't remember frank being this toxic masculinity last time because he was like you gotta crush the bull and pins like beetles in your cornflakes Oh, he, I think he was like that every time we've seen him. And he was like, salad. I'm not trying to trap a rabbit. And I'm like, I'm concerned, Franklin, about the vitamin deficiencies that you may be (laughs) experiencing in life. I want, I want Frank Wise to meet Argo Keen. Them to have a long talk about their diets. Yes. Speaking of, of Frank's curmudgeonness, the, um, not the album art. The episode art makes Frank look oh, way too happy. I don't considering remember what the episode is. What Does he it have was to do like... with the pull-out bed? Yes. I'm going to look it up because I All can't right. remember. Well, I can uh, just... Oh, yeah, dr- send it to me. I can just drop it at you. Ooh, at me. Um, I don't know if Skype will let me drag it like... Drag me. This... At me and drag me. Oh, that worked. Um, yeah, he looks way too happy given how he felt. Oh in my this gosh, scene. he! Wow. But then again, they this look scene... a lot older than I thought they would. Eleanor this scene... looks like uh, Aunt May from the Raimi That's... Spider-Man. <laughs> well, I thought she looked like Aunt May from Spider Verse, personally. Like a little uh... older, but. I don't know, older, I guess... Older Aunt May from Spider-Verse for me is just Aunt May from the Raimi movies. Uh, also, Woody is on Frank, the top of the bookshelf in this. Frank looks like 
he has our grandpa's face, like head, but Danny DeVito's body, and it's just <laughs> I don't know what to his say. His face is rounder than grandpa's, but look on yes. top of Wooten. This is the first glimpse we've gotten of Wooten's office before. Oh yeah, there is a Woody. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what kind of Sid nonsense? It, I think it's just that in front Woody doesn't of Woody. have a head. It's just in front of Woody, Victoria. No. It's blocking his head for copyright reasons. Oh, this is the ending of Toy Story 4. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Devin hasn't seen Toy Story 4, but this is how it ends. This scene also isn't even canonical. They point that out in like the art scrapbook thingy on the site because uh, like they, Wooten and Penny don't get into the room until Eleanor is already out of the Murphy bed. Honestly, it kind of looks like Wooten's trying to get her out. And Frank is trying to push it closed so she stays in. <laughs> That's what the smile is for. He's like, no, this is this is her home now. Yeah, so what I was expecting, like, because, you know, when they kind of, like, lay out, like, oh, this oh, is what the... Oh, does he have a picture of Wit's End on his wall? Yeah, or... Or is that his past house? Yeah, it, it looks like snow on the roof, so it could be Alaska. Oh, that'd be nice. Um... I, when, I can just headcanon who all these pictures are. There's a little picture of a mailbox. That's really cute. That's um, cute. At the beginning, actually, when... there's two pictures of a mailbox, and it's the same picture. One's just bigger than it's the other. It's a stock other photo. Picture. Um, when they set up like what the conceit of the episode is going to be, what I was expecting was like, oh, Penny's parents and Bradford are both going to like be at each other's throats and stuff and they're gonna be like we don't want to do this and bradford's like i don't want to do this um and that was a good be... bradford impersonation yeah can i just say real quick not a fan of bradford's new voice i yeah. really miss the old one yeah um this one sounds way too much like regis but that was not what happened in the episode instead it was like frank being like very aggressive and bradford just being very polite and trying to be as accommodating as possible to everyone. Bradford is, um, like, John Mulaney's If You Poured Soup in My Lap, I Would Apologize to You. That's that's his deal for this whole episode. Re-listening to the episode, it's basically just Penny and Wooten both yelling the word dad a lot for the whole episode. The thing that's interesting to me because i think this there's a lot of kind of different extrapolations you can take from the lesson of this episode and i think it's kind of interesting to think about because uh the way it's presented at the end is like oh you can't serve two masters you can't please everyone sometimes pleasing god means that you can't please certain people or you could connect can't please two masters so like you know you cannot serve both god and money that kind of thing um in the web quest they connected it to like martha and miriam in the bible where it's like oh martha was spending all her time setting up for jesus but miriam was you know actually sitting and listening to jesus and he was like miriam has chosen the better way and stuff and in adventure in bethany um but the interesting thing like i i very much empathize with frank and bradford both and they're like i don't want to just like sit and do nothing like i'm fine with like help like i like serving people and still doing things i don't want to just like sleep for a week while we're here but especially for bradford where it's like that's what he's been doing his whole life and paid to do so also I do... he never gets to see wooten like he just yeah. wants to spend time with his son no but i he lives with wellington he needs a break they look the same but it's not the same I feel bad for them. Like I'm concerned for both of them in the long run that they've reached a point where they're like, I can't allow other people to look after me. I, I don't feel like I'm at ease unless I'm constantly serving other people and I can't like allow other people to like fill me back up. You I know mean, what I there mean? There are people like that. Yeah, I know. And it's, it's not healthy. No. Like you need to have give and take and you need to be able to relax and like, and you can't just be constantly serving other people without any kind of, like, break or relaxing or having, like, a, an exchange there. So I was, like, kind of worried about them. And it's funny because 
the whole theme of the episode is supposed to be like Wooten and Penny were working too hard to try and do stuff for Frank and for Bradford and they just needed to relax and spend time with them. But conversely, they're like, oh, uh, Bradford and Frank needed to not relax and spend time with them. They needed to be doing things to serve them instead. So it's kind of the opposite. Uh, like Frank being like, I think that's a one moment that I got the most annoyed with Frank in this episode was when he was just like, oh, Bradford's too good for us. Even meat's too good for him. And I was like, you know what? I'm so done with you. Can you just shut up? I and the most, the most annoying thing about that was he wasn't even, like, Bradford explicitly said he wasn't even a vegetarian based on moral standards. It was just because he was doing yeah. it for his cholesterol. Like, I know. <laughs> meat isn't too good for him. He wants to eat meat. He's just trying to, like, not die as early as he could. He's like, I have to outlive Wellington. I have a bet. Have to get his inheritance. <laughs> Sorry, Talia. <laughs> Talia and I made a bet that I can outlive Wellington. <laughs> you know she would. She would. She yeah, totally maybe that's would. Ill uh, legal in Alaska. So what are they called again? I never remember the word. I don't think Talia and Wellington live in Alaska, though. I thought they did. Maybe they don't. They, they don't live. Like, Wooten's mom and dad live in Alaska. But I feel like he would have said if Wellington does. Yeah, I guess I was just Because, like, assume. it sounds like Wellington went on, like, a long trip for the for Basset Hounds. And you would think if he That's didn't true. have to travel, then if he's married, That's I don't true. know what's going I mean, on with that. Also... Like, his partner it makes and your, Talia would also be with him. And it Talia's makes your uh, business flights a lot longer. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, in the end, I spent the whole time just hating on Frank. And then the end, I was like, okay, I do feel bad for him. Like, that is pretty awful what happened to him, like 30 years working there and then getting laid off. The job insecurity of the trade industry is a big problem. Um. Yeah, it was a bummer. But like I said, it was like, okay, that explains why he acted like that, but it's not an excuse for acting like that still. Yeah. And I am deeply concerned about Frank keeping the meat pies in their bedroom instead of in a refrigerator. Yeah, I was just picturing like, Wooten's different faces of concern across this entire episode. I was and so glad Wooten addressed The most striking one was him being like, like, are those supposed to go in the fridge? I was like, thank you, Wooten. That is, like, the most, like, logically important line you've had in this, all of Adventures in Odyssey before. I I really, really like Wooten in this episode. Like, I think he was my favorite person in the episode. He just felt, like, a lot more competent than he gets to be mm -hmm. in a lot of other episodes. Like, he was pretty much the voice of reason for mm -hmm. almost the entire episode. And, like, when people were trying to, like, put themselves out of their way for something, he's like, no, I got it. And then, like, when they mess up with the door, he's like, actually, that's because of this and this, and there was a yeah. reason for that, and I have my reasons for doing what I'm doing. And, like, when Penny's upset about something, he's like, no, I already got this figured out. And it's just like, this is this is nice to have Wooten being, like, the smart I'm, person in the room. I'm hearing in my mind right now Wooten giving, like, the taco monologue from Petals to the Metal about, like, I'm a three-dimensional character. I have being. I'm not all ha-ha fart goofs. I have a soul. I'm my own person. Yeah, it was nice getting to see Wooten be, like, not just the brunt of, like, all the jokes, but, like... Yeah, I mean, he's, he's not a... always like that, but whenever no, he's know, just, like... like not like that at all he's rarely just, so much a protagonist really nice. in a very like capable capacity as he was in this episode like my thing is characters getting to act sometimes in a way that's opposing of their stereotype they might have so i really like it when like the peppy happy characters are evil for an episode or something like that or the comic relief characters get to be really smart and competent like those are the things i crave Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the video documentary was mostly about bowling um, and it had Diane and Golia talking a little bit about serving kids as the head of guest relations for Wit's End 
in Colorado Springs. What was the charity? Was it just Focus? Yeah, I don't. There wasn't one. Okay. Um, I caught a glimpse. I don't remember if I've seen this before. I feel like I would remember new mascot wit. Oh, I don't want to see Wits. it. I don't well, want to see. I don't want to see. No. Too bad. Too bad. No. Ah. Oh, how do I go back to the call? No, it's still there. Why yes. do you hate me? New mascot wit is here. I was about to say someone texted me, but now it's going to be the picture on my phone when I open it. <laughs> you monster. I'm going to have to see it again. What's wrong? Yeah, so that exists. Also, the audio mixing was a nightmare on this video, I have to say, because all of the Bob footage was mixed really quietly compared to the rest of it, and it was only in the left channel. Mm. So that was weird that that happened and has never happened before. Also, um, the the first bowling related injury line, like, excuse you, people get, people get bowling bull all the time. Like, bowling injuries all the time. I know. That's like I was a very like, what dangerous are you talking about? sport. Um, when I was bowling uh, for a work Christmas party, right before I went up, like when I grabbed a ball, I turned around to the people who I was going against and I said, on a scale from 1 to 10, how dangerous do you think this game is and how many injuries do people get? They didn't answer my question, but I feel literally, like it'd be higher than most people expect. Literally in the video, Bob is showing people like how to throw a bowling ball, like with the finger holes and stuff, and like how to get like the fingers yeah. the right depth so you don't get your knuckle. He's like, make sure you don't have your knuckle at the wrong depth or you could throw the ball and it'll like rip your finger off. Exactly. So I was like, I feel like that should demonstrate pretty clearly that it's, you know, it is a moderately injurious sport. You can tell it's been like a decade since I've been bowling this Christmas because when I got the ball, I was just spinning it around looking for like little finger holes. The bowling alley here doesn't have finger holes for the no, balls. No, I've, I've never, I don't think I've ever even held a bowling ball in my life that had finger holes in it. I mean, like the fake ones do usually that so. that are you talking about the ones that we have for like music Maybe. carnival <laughs> those don't count <laughs> those like 15 gram hollow plastic bowling balls i have this friend i won't say his name um you know who who has a broken finger at the moment so he just sat and watched us bowl mm -hmm. for like two hours and yeah because he didn't want to break all of his other fingers. That's wise. Which is, yeah, smart. So, final thoughts on this episode, Victoria? Uh, I don't know. I, I can't even say that like I felt like Bradford wasn't completely in character compared to how he usually is. Because I don't know enough about him. He's yeah, only been I mean, in we've like, never seen him I for as long of a stretch episodes. of time as this before. Yeah, I think he's only been about in five episodes, including this one. And basically every episode he's in, he only has like a couple lines other than this. Mm -hmm. This is the most he's ever been in an episode, so I guess this is like the biggest judge of character you've ever seen from him. Uh, I don't know, I expected more. I guess, from this episode. Yeah, he just felt rather he characterless doesn't really to me. He get to do anything. I feel like when we see Bradford normally, what we get the sense of is like, oh, he's this proper butler, but like, he he's has this... He's a fun this, boy. He has this deep relationship with Wooten where he like, understands his mind in ways that allows him to like, do these goofy things and in jokes and pranks and stuff with Wooten that gives them this like, special bond. And here he just felt like, some stuffy old guy who didn't really have any of those things. Yeah, like when Talia like does Wooten's hair all fancy, he like compliments it. Or like he's when listened this to silly all spray of... attack or stuff like that. Yeah, he's listened to like some of the Pool Boys songs, I'm pretty sure. He um silly he's read all of Wooten's comics. Yeah. Like he's he's a cool dude. He probably played games with Wooten and Wellington when they were kids. Like he he can chill. That's what I'm saying. He, he can, can vibe with it. Yeah. He can vibe. Yeah, he's um, got it. Yeah, I feel like Bradford in this episode failed his vibe check and that's he did. that's what it comes down to. I was I was disappointed. Yeah, it was just like 
every time he was on screen, I just, it, it's on screen, I felt just, I don't know, like a vague sense of like, of my expectations just being lowered. Like, I would, mm -hmm. it had, you know, here's what I expected. That made I me expected. sad because I really like Bradford. So do I. When when the episode credits happened, I didn't actually think it was a Kathy episode at first. Because, I don't know, it just felt like there's usually a oh. lot more character. You know, you win some, you lose some. Yeah. Yeah, I, like, I'm excited that we got Bradford. It just, it Maybe felt... Maybe it's because the focus was more on Frank, because that's where the conflict was. Yeah, I just felt like it was lacking that kind of, like, special spark of Bradford. Because Bradford isn't... That's what makes him an interesting character, is this duality of his personality that his relationship with Wooten gives him, and I feel like we didn't see any of that here. I guess he, like, did drive a motorcycle. That's pretty cool. Like, he didn't have to have anyone explain to him. He just, like, he's like, oh, yes, a motorcycle. This will I do. mean, I think there was a line in there that kind of implied it was more of just, like, a scooter, like a... Not a BAFTA, what's the... um. Yeah, that is just more like a, a motor scooter. Kind uh, of thing. Other... Especially because Wooten's like, I can get this up to like 22 miles an hour on the highway. Other notable things, uh, Bradford Tips, the cab driver. Good job, Bradford. Um, He's a human being. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the um, Bradford in his note when he left, he's like, oh, I'm... I'm not going to walk because that would take too long and I know you wouldn't want me to and uh, I'm not going <laughs> to do the cab because that will cost money and like I know you don't want me to spend money because that will offend you and I was just like you're leaving and you're never going to see Frank again who cares what he thinks he's been awful to you this entire Bradford time Bradford does because he's good Bradford is so precious and and he's just like, so I'll just take your new bike and just drop it off. And I was thinking like, okay, Bradford, I love you. That is so inconvenient. That I know. That is so inconvenient on and every I'm level. like, it's absolutely going to get stolen too. Because like, I'm going to drop your bike off in the free parking spot. I'm like, yeah, that bike's gone. <laughs> Bradford, Bradford believes in the good of people by some miracle, even though he, he lives with for Wellington Winston. <laughs> He he lives with Wellington, but he worked for Winston. Yeah. So like, oh my gosh, the patience this man must have. Um, See, this yeah. is what I mean. Like, working for Winston for so many years, and then we look at how he has this like compulsive need to always be helping others, and unable to let himself like relax or rest or treat himself at all, makes me worried that it's less like oh i just have such a giving heart which i mean he does but also like he's just like has just this psychological inability now to be able to appreciate himself and treat himself wellington isn't blameless here either no like i don't know if you saw the post i reblogged yesterday talking about atlas personalities it was talking about like steven universe future no um but it reminded me of this I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you can you can check okay. my Tumblr later and you'll see. Um I don't know. I thought this episode was serviceable. Uh I guess. That's like the worst thing you can say about an episode. I know. It's like the second episode in a row you said that about too. What was the other one? I don't remember, but I just remember that's like the last thing you said. Which, if I feel like I, I think heard the you last say that one about... we reviewed was like the. Well, the... it was very recent. I remember relatively recent because the last reviewed... the last review we did was two months ago. But what's her face? Uh, Nelson's sister, Valerie. Valerie. One of the last episode re reviews we did was the Valerie episode. Yeah, and whatever we did with that. Anyway, because I was going to say, okay, but... It's just so clinical. It's... I don't know. This I think I feel a little bit too negative about this episode to say I think it's okay, so... I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5. I just... I expected 
more and I'm not just saying that because I wanted Wellington to be mentioned I thought like I don't know I expected more from Bradford I do like that Bradford's been in the show more and by that I half mean at all Mm -hmm. but I also mean the fact that he's had like two important roles in two episodes over the past couple years two years a couple years years? I don't know um I don't know. It kind of makes me hope slash think maybe he's going to retire and move to Odyssey. But I don't know. I feel like the fact that they're putting him in more episodes is a little sus. So maybe maybe he's going to be moving down to Odyssey soon. That also means him leaving Wellington, which... I don't know if that's a good thing. I feel like that's a good thing for Bradford and a bad thing, bad for, thing Wellington. for Wellington. And a bad and thing Talia. for Talia and her horse. Assuming she's still, like, how old is Talia at this point now? Does she still live with Wellington? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It depends on if you sent her to boarding school or not, I guess. No, I mean, like... And also how... I don't know how fun old of it, she would be. came out, like, 18 years ago. Yeah, but how old... Was she supposed to be in that episode first off? I don't and know, and I don't know how much time has passed in Odyssey. I'm just saying she could be old enough. We don't. To be we don't know how much time has passed in Odyssey. She might not be, and we don't know be. if she odd ages. Odges. We don't know if she ages like, like Rodney, Jimmy. Or <laughs> like Jimmy, or like Mandy, like Whit. where she ages. She has reverse. the healing cloth. <laughs> There's Rodney. Where it's like, eh, mostly static. There's Jimmy, where you can tell he's aging. And then there's Mandy, where she backs up that car and just keeps going back and then zooms forward out of the show. So, yeah. Maybe Talia will be a fetus the next time she... (laughs) She Benjamin Buttoned. She Benjamin Buttoned. Oh, no. Not the Benjamin Button. What was the thing I was listening to recently? Where it's just like you Benjamin Button, and then was it the Nutcracker? Yeah, yeah, that was it. What RJ? I'm glad. I'm glad you listened to that episode too, because now you'll understand my context for that. Was it you Benjamin Button, and then that one Robin Williams film, Jack. Yeah, and then you Jack, and then you Benjamin Button, and you Jack, which is just aging backwards and forwards. And the funny I only thing know is, about Jack disease because of like Mabim Bam, and that's like my only frame of reference. I'd like never even heard BNC of the movie. BNC reviewed Jack, so I know the plot um, of that movie. There's one okay. point where even though he's like a second grader, he goes on a date with uh, what's her name, the dancer, Jennifer Lopez's character, who's his teacher. He like asks her to prom. And Fran Drescher is in the movie. This does She's ring like a bell. the mom this of one of the kids in his class. And he goes to a bar because he looks like an adult. And he yes. like hits on her. And I'm pretty sure they kiss. Even though he's supposed to be like eight or something like that. And she doesn't know that. And you're just so uncomfortable. Mm. The Pretty good time. it doesn't seem. Yeah. Um, I thought of this episode. Yeah, I was, I was saddened by the lack of like character for Bradford, and I was frustrated at Frank. Um, I appreciated Wooten and Penny getting to be, like, the straight men in an episode. Um, And, you know, Eleanor just trying to keep things holding together, and Bradford obviously trying to keep things together. Um, Yeah, it just, it felt kind of oddly structured to me, I guess, in that it was like Frank being antagonistic at everyone and Bradford just kind of taking it when the setup seemed like it was supposed to be like, oh, we have these like equal and opposite poles that we're putting against each other. And it was really just like a monopole. And you know, like those, those beats that like rom-coms hit, like Mm -hmm. any romantic movie basically, or like any adventure movie, or just he's like, the messy one, and these... he's the. Eh. Oh, it's like we have to meet these beats. Where it's just like in an adventure movie, it's like oh, the hero has to doubt themselves 
before mm. they go to the final conflict or like Refusal the couple to the call. have to have a fight before they can get back together and you're sitting the there dream and you're drop like, bucket and you're like the is data this really, hyper is this really necessary before we go to the ending because we know what's gonna happen and like that's how i felt when they're just like bradford ran away like he's a straight <laughs> cat or something like that he knows how to ride motorcycles that are very slow um and i was just like okay i guess that's not necessary but whatever and they're like and the motorcycle's gonna blow up and i was just like oh my gosh <laughs> why are we doing this but yeah i was really hoping like he wasn't gonna be on the motorcycle and he would just like come in through the door when they're freaking out and he'd be like oh actually i forgot my suitcase or something like that, but I can see you don't want me to leave. Just something that would, like, subvert it a little bit. But it's just like, nah, man, get get him before he blows up all over the place. So I mean, it was a loose flywheel, so I don't think it was going to explode. But You don't know. That's true. I don't know what a flywheel is, so. <laughs> so what would you rate it? I'll give it a 2.5. It's a flat pass. It's a flat wheel. Uh... Yeah. Okay. After the static, we'll talk about Basset Hounds and more Basset Malarkey. Coming up after the break. ba da ba 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 da Three, two, one. Take off your shoes. <laughs> your shoes. Take them off. <laughs> okay, let's check. Uh, it's 516, episode 516, Basset Hounds. Tori Martin wrote this one, obviously, because it's an early, like... Oh, I thought you were going to count us in. I didn't realize we'd actually... Episode. <laughs> no, that was it. <laughs> okay. Good. I'm totally prepared. What happens Zero in Basset warning. Hounds, Victoria? <laughs> Uh, in this episode, uh, Wooten's grandpa, I always have to remind myself going into this episode, does that not he doesn't die. have a name. He's very, he's still very much alive. I should have, like, started the thing with, like, Pam's face as my face. And then he should have, but you gave me no warning, so you get no warning either. That's true. This I, is on you. Yeah, I just kind of jumped into than it. I did. Okay, so Pam, Wooten's Hutan. grandpa is not dead. No. But in a big Yet. power move. He's still distributing his will. And by that, I mean 99.9% uh, .9 of his stuff is going to Wellington. Uh, not to Wellington. Point, no, not to Wellington. Sorry. He's just always the person I'm thinking uh -huh. of every yeah, waking and dreaming moment. I love him so much. Uh, goes to, like, charity Wilma. and stuff. And 0.25% um, goes to Wilma. 0.25% goes to Wooten, and 0.5% is just a big screw you to the whole family. <laughs> Was the money that he spent on making this video and that is how to it's flip everyone out. off? I never thought about it, but do you think like the video has like a really big production? I hope like, so. <laughs> he's filming it with his like million dollar camera. <laughs> He's filming it on a phantom. It's like 18,000 frames per second. I I paid to rent one of the only current 3D cameras I, in the world. It's a the 3D film. IMAX camera. <laughs> Christopher Nolan wasn't using this one. Fun fact, uh, he had to borrow one of my two cameras because I got a spare camera. That's the one he broke while he was filming <laughs> Batman. Um... Anyway, uh, yeah, and then it's kind of like the family playing gold digger. Uh, Wooten's now, cousin. now that you pointed out like how much of a power move it is, I do kind of dig the idea of like distributing your will and also having a funeral for yourself before you die, just so you can like <laughs> see how grieved everyone is and get to like um, watch their reactions to how you <laughs> distribute your earthly possessions. There's, uh, there's a I mean, it only from... works if you, like, fake your death and then you're, like, behind a false wall in the back of the sanctuary or whatever, but, 
you know, you can reveal yourself at the end or from inside the coffin is the real fun part, you know, to each their own. Sorry, go on. There's this quote I'm trying to... Oh, here it is. Uh... Oh, I can't find the whole quote, but it's uh, from Star Kids, a very Potter musical, where uh, when Harry first gets his invisibility cloak or like he first brings it out, he's just like, I think like Ginny says like, wow, you can do so many things with an invisibility cloak. And Hermione's just like, yeah, you could use it to just like prank people. And then um, you know, like Ron says like, you use it to prank people and... Harry's like, oh man, I would, I would kick wiener dogs. And Hermione says, I would use it so I never have to look in my reflection in the mirror again. And then Ginny says, I would use it to trick everyone into thinking I'm dead and then <laughs> go to my own funeral and then pop out when they least expect it. <laughs> it gets really dark really quick. But yeah. What else happens in the episode? <laughs> <laughs> What's his cousin's name? I always get it wrong. Wilma? Or a Wilma. different one? Madison. And I always want to say Velma, like Scooby Doo. Yes. Um. Okay, so Wilma, Wooten's cousin, uh, pretends like the to Flintstone. have the other Hanna Barbera cartoon. Have a husband and kids and a family that loves her, and that's her playing make believe for the day. And she hired actors. Um. And Wooten figures it out immediately because. One of uh, this non-British woman's kids is now British, and the other one's personality is 100% different than it is, because she's Wooten's like, pen pal, so he knows. Given that she's broke, and, like, I feel like they're... Do you think she kidnapped those kids? No, 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 I just mean, say? like, I kind of understand how she lost all of her money now like you could have just said your kids were like had lyme disease or something and they couldn't come oh they got the measles because i'm rich so i don't believe in vaccines um and like something that would have do you been think more wellington vaccinated talia yes um i have i have at least that much faith in wellington okay that's um, good oh. i never know how much you actually like wellington or not well, not and as that's much a as rock you, fact. but you know that's a that's a low bar to clear. Um, no, I just feel like there are easier, there's more cost effective ways that she could have tried to fake her situation than hiring model children. Yeah, you know, given that she has no money, I also love the phrase like "invested in a failed like dot com business." Like that's so late '90s, early 2000s, like. You know that oh. makes me think of what? Disney with dot go. I forgot about that, but like same thing when like in uh, Seven Deadly Dwarves with the Amazon thing, and they're like, "Don't make, don't even think about making that dot com joke." Like that phrase, like dot com as a noun, is like so narrow casted in terms of time that that was a term that was used. It dates it so hard, and it's like so quaint now puts the coin to an antiquated. I remember how we used to type www dot in front of websites and now we don't anymore. I really like that. I don't think I've ever told anyone that before, but I really like that. Your darkest <laughs> secrets. It's like the opposite of... It saves of, me so much time. It saves me 0 0.0 sec. It's the opposite of how we used to have to not put the area code in when we phoned someone. Yeah, just, and now it was just seven oh digits man. instead of ten. I guess I guess the time that not having to type that in got it got re uno reversed Every, by the time I have itself. to take to call people now. All that sucks. You gain some, you lose some. And every oh man, dude, I used to have a happy life, and you just you took that away from me. <laughs> No, you, no, Victoria, I didn't take it away from you because those were also the days when you couldn't be on the phone in the house and use the internet at the same time because of dial-up. So, I mean, say what you will about dial-up. It made a great at noise. It, at least it sang a little song each time it, it turned on. It did. Sure did.
Okay, what happens in this episode also? I can't even remember anymore, Devin. What do you want to rate it? Um, I'll give it a four and a half, probably. I'll, I'll give it a, a five, I think. Okay, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. It's been episode 178. Odyssey Oddcast. Yeah, um, um, goodbye. Bye. I'm going to turn off. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just... And Victoria has hung up the call. Oh, who could that be? Did it like even get your reaction or did it just I don't know. Stop. Okay. So the recording did crashed as soon as I accepted Victoria's call. <laughs> did you at least laugh? Um I think there was a a small chuckle like deep in the core pit of my soul. Did you smile occurred. fondly? <laughs> Probably not. Oh, um, I'm a failure then. I guess I'll just hang up on this. Call. Please don't. That was the fourth time we've had to sync recordings tonight. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me something? I'm saying that you should tell me how, what happens in the rest of Basset Hounds. It took so long for us to finish this episode that I have a tattoo now. I thought that was your arm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I thought you just shoved your entire hand in your mouth. I almost screamed. Oh my gosh. Can you tell I'm tired? Can you tell I've had a long day? I thought you thought I cut off my hand, but that's even no. funnier. Oh, I've been up since before six. I haven't had dinner yet. Let's just tell me, tell me what happened in the episode. <laughs> I already did. Wellington's Wellington's a, a baby, and he gets mad. And Wooten has a good relationship with his grandfather because he needs one good relationship with a parental figure in his family. Yes. Okay. Oh, I miss Bernard so much. When I heard his me voice too. at the beginning of this, I was like, "Oh yes, oh, I love Dave Madden's Please voice." Please so never much. make that face or gesture or no it just again. it sounds so good to hear his voice it's so that's lovely me. I anytime love... i hear uh dave madden or alan young mm -hmm. in literally anything i love sorry sorry tom i love how like vicious wooten's guilt tripping is at the beginning trying to get bernard to go with him when he's like yeah i mean i guess you'll need the time to rest up for that big job i got for you and all he's like I don't think there's any other place where Wooten, like, intentionally lays on, like, so much guilt onto someone to try and, like, manipulate them like that. See, the thing is, I'm not completely convinced that was intentional. No, I'm pretty sure this was the one time where he I was think actually it was like, being, he was actually not being sincere. And I think was, it was, like, slightly unintentional. Maybe. No, because he had that other line, he was like... I mean, you're a great friend who I'd do anything for. Okay, yeah, that's definitely intentional. Um, I mean, dude, you grow up with Wellington. Yeah. You pick kind up, of things. up on you. <laughs> That's true. I just love Bernard's like, oh, there has to be some of level you. of personality diffusion. <laughs> but but Bernard's like, there's two of you. Like you think there'd be a limit? Yeah, you'd think. So, uh, it's stru structurally for Wooten, which I think we kind of talked about recently in another review, like the kind of structure of how Wooten's character was revealed in his early episodes and stuff like that. Um, this, this is the most we ever learn about him. This is the first episode where we start unpacking Wooten's secrets, because his first appearance, four albums prior, it's very clear that Wooten has a lot of mystery to him. He shows up out of nowhere as this goofy, zany mailman, but we never see his face for a decade. And in his first episode, he has... Not one, but two mentions with the exact same line that he gives about not having certain things that he wanted during his childhood because, well, just because. And it clearly leaves this impression that he's hiding something sad. And the clear implication is that he was like desperately poor when he was growing up. Um, a couple episodes before this, we learned that Wooten has an identical twin brother who is a rich businessman, which is very unexpected, but that doesn't deter, it doesn't eliminate the childhood image that we had of Wooten's situation until this episode. 
right until the moment when Bernard and Wooten get into a limousine. And then we have the further plot twist later in the episode that Wooten draws Power Boy. So it's a double whammy. I, I think I've told you this before. I never picked up on the fact the that Wooten Power draws Power Boy pretty much ever. Uh, <laughs> to this day, in fact, I just what? found out when you said it right now. But, I'm um, sorry I had to break it to you like this, and not by listening to BTV Live. So, or it album wasn't 50. until... Uh, when's the first time he, like, clearly states it? This episode. No. No, like... Like, heavily... Well, his grandpa says... I we're very proud of your Power Boy comic books. And then he I'll says... I'll get back to that. And um, then he says, you're not going to tell anyone about that, are you? And he was like, you're a powerful artist and stuff like that. So I'd say it's pretty clear here. See, I never I never got that. Um, uh, well, I guess it would be the wise rich man, or poor the poor rich guy. What does he... That's when... Oh, yeah, when Grady finds out? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's that's it. That's when I, uh, either that or a little bit before that. There's also, is it stars in our eyes when there's the whole, like, thing about... No, I still didn't figure it out. No, I know, I know. I'm just saying that's another episode where they made a whole thing out of it beforehand. Yeah, but I still... Okay, so I'll say when, uh, Wooten having the supply, I thought it was just like, I really love this thing, so I want everyone else to really like this thing, so I'm just gonna buy them copies and, Mm -hmm. like, give them copies because I want them to really check it out, too. Um, and uh, the grandpa saying, we're really pow- proud of your Power Boy comics, I thought he was just impressed that Wooten had such a big collection. Like, he owned every Power Boy comic, and he uh-huh. was just like, "I that's really impressive that you own all of them. I'm glad that you're so passionate about that thing. Well, it's Good funny, because the, the line before that, he's like, uh, you were a powerful artist as a child, and your talent's only grown with years. Your grandmother See, and I, I are very I proud of your Power Boy comics. I never understood that and part. And then later in the episode... I thought when... he was just saying, like, you're really good at drawing, but also on an unrelated <laughs> note, you have a really cool collection of comic books. And then and then for Stars in Our Eyes, when he's just, like, stressing uh-huh. about um When he was like, like oh Power yeah, Boy. Connie, I guess maybe I'll have to give the writers a call. Yeah, but I never, I never got that. See, the thing is, I, if you haven't noticed about me, this about me, Devin, uh, one, I'm very dumb. Two, I get stressed a lot real easy. So him being like, Connie, I'm worried about Power Boy. I don't know what's going to happen to him in the next issue. I was like, yeah, man, I know that feel when you're worried about the protagonist in a series you really love and you don't know what's going to happen to him. And then when he's just like, yeah, Connie, maybe that will happen. I was just like, it's so great to see like fans coming together and coming up with fan (laughs) theories and just like, even though Connie's not that into it, she's like still there to listen to Wooten's problems and stuff like that. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. I love I love that bit in the episode because yeah. I love when Connie's like, Wooten, relax. The writers have these things planned out so far in advance. They know exactly what's going to happen. And Wooten's like, they do? See, uh, it's funny to me now in yeah, retrospect, sure if not a little stressful, uh-huh. hearing something like that from a uh-huh. content creator. Uh-huh. Um, but, but me listening to it as a kid, I was just like, yeah, when, when Kim Possible and Ron Stoppable like, got got stuck by a dragon that one time in the so the drama movie i was really worried too but then they were able to come through and she got like the new power suit and that helped him like take take the clone boyfriend down and stuff Eric, was so, that his name i think so i always forget like what their synth like, drone synth clone synth drone or synth clone something like that yeah i mean he's a clone so but yeah, that was always my thought. I was like, yeah, it's really stressful and you don't know if Candace is going to snitch on Phineas and Ferb, but I think they'll get out of it. If we hope and pray. <laughs> so yeah. if you send your thoughts and prayers and donate Twitch bits to them. Send my thoughts and prayers Phineas and Ferb out there in the swampy verse with Milo Murphy. Um... I was going to say, there's also in this episode later on, there's a much subtler reference to it when Wooten is like, Wilma, if you told me I could have helped. And she's like, you're a mailman. What could you have done? And he's like, I have 
other ways, you know. And she's like, yeah, I know. Well, when I thought he just meant like he has a lot of pull in town because well, lots of people like him. Yeah, he does, but I think he meant he's also rich. No, he did mean that. I just didn't understand. Yeah, yeah. I no, I'm saying that wasn't was a much going. subtler one. I wouldn't expect you to figure it out from that if you didn't get the other. Yeah. Stuff. Um, oh, I wouldn't expect me to figure out literally anything in that show if I didn't get the other stuff. Um, the best line of this episode, probably of this entire album, is Wooten's... Honestly, what? I think I did figure it out when Grady figured it out. I was like, what? Wooten is the other power um, is when Wooten... F's, F's in the chat for Victoria, when... who is very stupid. When Wooten's like, when we were kids, Wellington convinced me I was adopted, and I believed him for a year. But... That's ridiculous. You're twins. Yeah, I know. That's why I only believed him for a year. Me. I I never thought I was adopted at any That's point. good. No. Did you ever think you were adopted? No. Okay. Why would it's I? Because I was thinking if I was adopted, then Devin was also adopted. And I couldn't want to see I couldn't see anyone wanting to adopt both of us. <laughs> we must be That's fair. I think one of us is enough. Exactly. There's a little too much synergy when we're together. There's too much chaos flow. Especially when, like, if people if people think this is bad, just imagine... Um, what we're like pre... when the camera's not on. No, I was going to say, me pre-grade 7, before we didn't get along at all. And you were my enemy. Um... The thing, the question that I took away from this episode that I never thought about before is how is Wilma related to everyone? Because old, gran old Grandpa Bassett, in his dispersal speech, he talks about his siblings and his son Winslow. His, so he talks about like one son singular, and then he calls Wilma his granddaughter. So yeah. actually, you know what? I just thought he could have a dead, dead child that he didn't mention there. That's probably it. Because he talks about his siblings or and his... Or could have had another wife. His son, point. Winslow. Well, he'd s still ha need to have another child because he calls Wilma his granddaughter, which would mean Wilma is either actually Wooten's sister, um, and they say cousin repeatedly. You'll so make a theory about that. <laughs> or there's some sort of weird step relation or adoption thing going on, like Grandpa adopted her as his granddaughter instead of his daughter, like Jade Harley kind of thing growing on. But no, now that I realize it, he could have had another child besides Winslow who died so they weren't mentioned in his will, but they had Wilma, and so she's his granddaughter. That makes sense. I figured it out. Will, Wilma, coincidence? Will Smith? Will, will Ryan? Will Smith? We've never seen Wilma and Will, will Smith, Smith in, the in the same place. Or Will Ryan. Ooh. Um, I have a theory. I think Will Smith and Will Ryan are brothers. Are brothers. Because they have the they same first name. But they collectively raised Wilma. And they are the sons of, of Willington Will's Bassett. Grandfather. Or they're Talia's they're Talia's kids, because we still don't know how old Talia is. Who knows? Who knows? We don't know how old she ever was. Maybe she was 40 and for the fun of it. Who knows? For all we know, Maybe Talia doesn't has... know how old she is either. I'm Maybe convinced she... half the people in Odyssey don't even know their own ages. So like... Probably. It's very Night Vale, really. It is. It's horrifying. Um, speaking of ages and timeless aging, actually, that brings me to the only other note I have for this episode, which is that it's weird how voice-wise, Young Wit is also old Grandpa Bassett. Because, like, Jim Custer... Oh my gosh, he is. Yeah, I know. I was like... I never thought voice? And then that. I realized, I was like, that's weird. Like, Jim Custer had such an interesting voice, like, the Aww. most timeless voice that makes him sound like Oh, did old, he pass away? Uh, pretty recently, yeah. Aww. A couple months ago, I think. Um, mm. He had the most interesting voice that was so timeless, and it made him sound, like, old and wise, but youthful at the same time. Which is I why he was, voice. like, the most perfect person to voice young wit. Because it made him sound, like, wise even while he was a young adult. He has whimsy in his vocal cords. He, had, he has the wisdom hard-earned of how many times he's going to die in the young wit books and get revived by the cloth. 
He's seen he's, he's seen the other side of the door too many times. He's me by the end of Nier Automata once I equipped all those uh, chips and I finally knew how not to get killed every thirty uh-huh. seconds. He's the the drawing that we had from Drawful that someone said was the door from FMA <laughs> at the Christmas party. Uh, I need to post all those pictures in our chat. Um, I don't know if you can tell. The so Riley and Annie can picture over them to try and figure out what was what. I didn't have enough time to listen to this episode before, but I've heard it five million times, so yeah. it's fine. Um, I I just really love Wooten, not Wooten, Wellington, like the dumb boy he is yelling at a video and the video just talking back it's he, good it's he always knows the... wellington well enough that it's... wellington will be like this it's one of those like classic comedy tropes that never gets old is like person being predictable enough that you can answer them on a pre-recorded message thing like that bit that i came up with for the christmas musical the first year i was in vancouver the spy yeah. one yeah Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, um, which was there's... I only did that because I was directly inspired by that one Matt Smith Doctor Who short where you had the recording with the silence looped over and over. Um, I um, I had uh, I was watching Final Space season two mm-hmm. a couple days ago because it's on Netflix, and one of the episodes mid season two was one character running off, and then he left like a voice message. Or like a hologram message for the other characters and he was like i've gone off don't look at don't come for me and then it like turns off and then the main character is like okay guys we're gonna go for him we're gonna go get him back and then it turns back on he's like yeah i i left a second message i mean it don't come for me and it turns off he's like okay guys let's get our stuff and everyone's like oh we're already here we we're just waiting for you to wake up so we can leave and he's like sweet let's go get him that reminds me have you carbonated anything weird in the soda stream yet not yet, but I had uh, grapefruit pop, and grapefruit pop is weird to me, so... Like, you made grapefruit juice into grapefruit pop, or you just had grapefruit pop? Like, Dad put carbonated water, and then he put grapefruit flavoring, and then he wanted to see if it was too strong, so he got me to taste test it, the person who doesn't like or drink grapefruit prop, pop, uh-huh. and then asked me what I thought. And I shrugged my shoulders and drank it. In case you were curious, because I know you were, why it made me think of that. It's because when on Ready, Set, Show, when they did the Weird Carbonated Beverages episode, the first time they did that, Olin Rogers was the guest that they had for that. Oh. Yes. Um, also, when I dad... saw that mom and dad bought the soda stream, I popped my head into the car. I was like, so you just had a hankering for some bubbly butter, huh? See, that's that's what I said to dad tonight. And then he laughed and walked out of the room. Um I uh, I walked in. We should probably finish having, reviewing this episode. Yeah, I walked in right before having dinner to them watching very loudly videos uh, on YouTube mm-hmm. of a lady uh, turning NyQuil into pop and then drinking it. And I was said, I don't want to know what you're doing. And then I went on <laughs> with making my dinner. I feel like you should show them, especially the Olin Rogers Ready, Set, Show with it, just as a warning so they can realize how much they need to not push the button one too many times and what will happen if they do. Okay. Remind me after and we will. We need to finish this episode review. We do. We do need to. Um, I'm not really going to talk about Wellington that much because I feel like I've already... <laughs> Beat that horse talks. to death a million times? Well, I don't know if that's the appropriate thing to say considering Talia and her horses. But... Oh. Um, I also, I forgot to say, I didn't put in my notes, but my favorite ongoing theme in this episode that is funny, that is not um, just the one line about like Wooten being adopted but I just I am absolutely endeared by the ongoing bit about all of the emergency rations that Bernard brought to Alaska and how as everyone's having like caviar and hors d'oeuvres and he just keeps eating like beef jerky and dried fruit slices out of his backpack and stuff and he has like a sleeping it to everyone and everyone's like you hobo get away (laughs) a sleeping bag and a headlamp and stuff like that like he continues Mm -hmm. to insist on using these things 
and how he like episode. can't wrap his mind around the mansion he thinks it's a hotel and he can't find the light switch and he's like it is yeah i i was thinking when he said that line about the hotel that that was a very good like concise way to put it in an audio medium without having the visuals to like explain how like luxurious the house is mm -hmm. is him like thinking, that's that's a lot smarter than just being like whoa look at that House, it that must house, be six exactly. stories I was thinking, tall. I was, I was like, and the terraces. And, I was like, yeah. that is a very good, concise way to convey the hyperbole with dialogue only. Mm -hmm. And this way it lets you imagine, like... Exactly. It was a great way looks. of, like, tell, don't tell, I guess. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was just, there was a little note I mean, about I the writing. I mean, I guess that's how radio works. Tell, don't tell. <laughs> I, guess, I, I guess it does, yeah. You definitely no, can't that, show. So. That line stuck out to me. I was like, that was good writing for the medium. Yeah. Also, Bernard, when, when Wellington is questioning him, and, and Bernard reaches that point where he's like, oh, I need to be snooty to this guy, not tell him what I do. And he's like, oh, I just took over the Golden Glass Company, actually. And... You know, I was like, yeah, you hustle them, Bernard. So that's all I got for this episode. Yeah, like I, I said, I'll probably give it, I'll give it a 4.6, I think. It's a very good classic that... episode, reveals a whole lot about Wooten's character. Um, both of them are revealed very well, like narratively, the way that they're revealed is very smooth, which I like. There's, Bernard and Wooten just have a good dynamic. They do. I mean, it's very similar to, like, the Bernard-Eugene foil. I feel like that's what it evolved into. Like, they carried on that same... A very similar relationship. Mm -hmm. But, like, this one is, like, sarcastic. Instead of sarcastic meets intellectual, it's sarcastic meets silly. It becomes, kinda. like, Bernard becomes the straight man to Wooten. Because um, yeah. it happens in this, and then it gets carried on very heavily, obviously, in the other side of the glass, where we get three whole episodes of that later on. Yeah. Um, very good three whole episodes where they dress up like Bush. Yes. Um, and they get not a, the president. And get a pie thrown at him or shoe, a shoe. Yeah. Um, what was I? Don't know. Sorry, I was gonna say a thing. I can't remember what the thing was. I guess I'll never know. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to give it a five. I just really like all the characters in this. The writing's really good. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I, I talked about in the wedding episode how I really like uh, Wellington's relationship with Connie and Eugene. And it was like the trio I never knew I needed. Uh -huh. Having said that, I need so much more wellington and bernard it is just like for the three comedy. lines that they shared in this episode it would have been can, just think about it think about it though like think about how he is with wooten mm -hmm. and now imagine how he'd be with wellington i was gonna say we just need a whole bunch of like road trip au's for these guys but we literally got that with bernard already in eugene we did but like um oh, i'm writing it in my mind wellington's yeah. supposed to go off on a plane but he can't get first class. Yeah. So then he has to go with the peasants where Bernard is and they're sitting beside each other. And and then something happens where they can't fly and so they end up having to drive all the way back like through Canada and everything down through BC. Bernard thinks uh, Wellington is Wooten for the first whole episode and Wellington's just leading him on. <laughs> no, no, but that's a plot twist. Like, as, the, like... as the audience, you don't realize until the end of the episode when Bernard calls him Wooten that he thought that was Wooten the whole time. But, like, uh, Wellington's trying to data mine him for information about Wooten, so he's pretending to be What Wooten. would you say that the name of my but... first dog was and my mother's maiden name? <laughs> but, um... Bernard's also trying to data mine Wooten for information about his childhood just because he's bored on the flight and he's already read the magazine that's in like the pouch in front of him before uh -huh. and it was it didn't have efficient cleaning techniques so yep. he doesn't want to look at it again mm -hmm. uh oh what we need a clever clever pun name um and then they start. have to stay in a B&B &B, but there's only one bed and then we oh. all there's only one bed, but has termites, so Bernard just sleeps in his car. 
Wellington, Wellington sets also the whole building the on fire and himself, and that's the end. And then it becomes Kibashi. an arson, arson road trip on the run on the land. Oh, uh, dude, this is where this is where Wellington was during all the time gap when he was gone, and uh-huh. this is why Bernard isn't back in the show. This is where he went because they're the on the run for said. arson charges through Canada <laughs> together. <laughs> The show has never said oh, what happened to Bernard, so... They're trying to flee extradition just, charges. He's just fleeing with Wellington. That's my head cannon. We'll go they're just on an adventure until proven otherwise. Elope in Bermuda. I feel like at this point, they're not going to say Bernard's dead, so he's just living with Wellington and Talia. And Maud's there, Maud, too. I was going to say Maud adopted Talia. Maud, it's... She deserves a good mom. I need to know what happened to Talia's mom. Unless Wellington never got married. I could see him getting married, though. Like, unless he didn't get married any, like... He... He pulled... He pulled an Annie, and he adopted a kid to make him look better (laughs) in the press's eye. He just found her on the side of the road in Alaska one day. And he's like, oh, guess guess you're my kid now. Guess I'm a dad now. <laughs> guess I'm, and then oh, we get guess some I'm dead. hilarious, like, one man and a baby hijinks of him trying to figure out how to raise a child, and it's great. And Bradford's, Dude. like, the goofy butler who won't help him out enough because Bradford's just filming it all and putting it on YouTube, Snapchatting it all the food. <laughs> Bradford's like, I have so many subscribers on YouTube. I have so many scrovels. Um... Dude, like, as if I couldn't love Wellington even more, now you're telling me he's just straight up Mando slash Reagan, and I just... (laughs) I can't handle this. Okay. I've never thought about categorizing Mando and Reagan together before. But, I mean... I put them them in just the same category as, oops, I'm dad now. Yeah, I mean, I guess. (laughs) Okay. Which the, is a character trope I really love. What are we doing so, next time, Victoria? Uh, also, I would put uh, I put Bradford into the oh, "Oops, I'm Dad now." David Washington category. He has kids, though. Has to be someone who doesn't have kids. That's David. The law. David, the counselor from Camp Camp. Yes, he goes into that category. Uh, we are doing the the new album, but not the new album, the other new album next uh-huh. time. Yes. What everyone's been waiting for. We're for talking, over half a year. We're talking about Paige from the play. No, the first one. We already recorded the first one. What was the opening episode? Um, I oh, don't even remember. It's been it was too long. The Rightly Divided, right? Yeah. That sounds right. And then... Um, what was that one about? It was... The one with soccer and Camilla and cursing people. Oh, right. People. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, what was yeah, the other Sarah. Sarah's in that one. Yeah. What was the other storyline? It was about... It was the guy being bullied. Yes. Spoilers. <laughs> um, spoilers for the episode that came out. Spoilers. In <laughs> July. For the episode that came out like eight months ago. Okay. And also Man of the House is the other one. Yes. Yes. We haven't reviewed that one yet. No, we have not recorded that yet. Okay. But we will on Sunday, hopefully. Hopefully on Sunday. Okay. That's what we're doing next time. Thank you for joining us on our side of the YouTube. I've been Devin Francis, also known as London Meltzner. <laughs> You've been watching the Adventures in Odyssey podcast. Thank you for I waiting. I should hang up on Skype again. Thank you for waiting for us while Victoria's laptop was dead for two months. My laptop was being repaired for an entire month. And turns out... The, the part that was broken was literally the first thing I said on day one. And literally the last thing they fixed. Shocker. But now I basically have an entirely new laptop. Shocker. My laptop is, it was, is Theseus's ship. It was so obvious what the problem was. Apparently that doesn't happen usually. Anyway, let's go. We're way okay. over time. Goodbye. It's been too long. Bye.